Hello and welcome. Chef Pennington here in Austin, Texas, where we bring flavor to the table, and that's exactly what we're doing today. Today is all about peak of the season tomatoes. This is the time of year, folks, when you can make the best tomato sauce that's possible all year long. And the peak of the season is August and September. So right now is the time to go get organic if you guys can spend a few extra dollars, which is not going to break the bank because this is the peak of the season. So they're priced perfectly. And the flavor profile is amazing. It's bright, acidic. The natural sweetness comes through. I'm going to show you guys the perfect technique for making amazing tomato sauce. And that's what we're about here at Butter and Time is using good technique. That's how you make your food taste really good. Using a good recipe is step one, but the actual technique to getting it to a finished product is always going to be the key. And at Butter and Time, that's what we're all about. So if this is your all's first time visiting us, go ahead and hit the subscribe button and turn on the bell so you know whenever we're going to post our next video. And let's get started. Shopping for tomatoes. This is the fun part. When you're at the store, try to get a variety. It's just going to create a much better depth of flavor. If you can find heirlooms, definitely grab some because they have just incredible flavor. And those are the pretty tomatoes that we went with. So to prep them, we want to make sure that we remove the core of the pit. We don't want to do that after we roast them because it's just, it's not really easy to pull off. Just do it first. Super easy. Here's some of the heirlooms that I picked up. They're just absolute stunners. Take a look at this dark one. You'd think it'd be dark on the inside, but it's not. And then this last one, this orange one, is just a stunner. It's so beautiful. Take a look at this. Can you imagine just slicing that little salt on the plate? Oh, look at that. Just so beautiful. So buy whatever's really catching your eye. Try to go with the organic if you can. It's just going to have a little bit more flavor. We're not going to manipulate the, what we're, the flavors very much here. Just a kiss of a little bit of salt. I use kosher. You could use sea salt. And a little bit of cracked black pepper. I've got parchment paper there and a little olive oil in the base. And make sure that they're all facing down and that you only cut them in half once. Really important. And we're going to roast these off at 425 for one hour and then let them relax for one hour with the oven off. Pits. And here is our star of the show. Perfectly roasted tomatoes. The value of roasting the tomatoes is it sweetens them. It brings a lot more mature flavor to them. It helps them essentially denature. And we're speeding up that process by using the oven versus just letting them sit on our counter for a couple of days. This is a much better process. If we were just to cut these up, put them in a pot and start cooking them, like if we had concassade these ones too and moved, removed the peel and decided to cook them in the pot, you're not going to have the same sauce. It's going to be, it'd be actually more acidic without roasting them, which can actually lead to a little bit of a, an odd flavor. That would be the type of sauce that you'd want to cook for a long time. That's a true technique. You could totally go there. I like being very simplistic right here and not adding a lot to it. I actually got the idea from one of my good buddies. He simply used a little bit of salt in the beginning and that's it and it roasted. You could go for up to nine hours in around a 225 to 250 degree oven, maybe overnight while you're sleeping, something like that. That's a low enough temperature that you're not gonna be in danger of something catching fire or anything like that, no problem. Um, these are roasted for one hour and then turn the oven off at 425 and turn the you turn the oven off and then let them go an hour just kind of calming their way down which is a really cool technique and it's the faster way of doing it and it's it's ever bit as good for my opinion of going nine hours now there is some value in the nine hour it's going to give you a little more flavor so two hours and we're making the best tomato sauce that we can make really honestly so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to remove all of the peels and then we'll get to the cooking part. So let me do that real quick. All right, y'all. Now it's time to do something with these little guys. These are San Marzano tomatoes. And San Marzano tomatoes are considered the best in the world. And they come from Italy. They are sweet. They're considered a plum tomato and they're wonderful, but these are really little and we're going to be removing the peel from all the tomatoes that are roasting in the oven right now. But this guy, if we just roasted him. It would just not work. And you don't want to peel the other tomatoes before you put them in the oven. Cause if you do, they're just going to turn into soup and that is a fail. And I really encourage you not to do that. 
So as we're roasting right now, when it comes time, they're gonna come off. We're just gonna be able to pull the peels off very easily. So these guys, what are we gonna do with these guys? What we're gonna do with these is we're gonna do something the French call concasse. Learn that cool word in culinary school. And what does concasse mean? Well, concasse in the French means a crush or to grind. In the culinary world, like in the kitchen, when somebody talks about concassing, it's essentially removing the peel and the, the, the technique at which that's done. And it's very easy. What we're gonna do is we're gonna take a knife and we're simply gonna, there's one that it has, you know, where the, we're connected to the vine. That's where you're gonna put an X. Really simply, just an X, nothing, you don't have to do anything else. And you'll do that to all of them. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna put them into boiling water and we're gonna boil them for two minutes. And then afterwards, we're gonna put them into an ice bath just to stop the cooking, but it shocks them and it makes it really easy to take all the peels off. It takes no time at all. So let's do that real quick. So one of the tips when you guys are shopping for your tomatoes is you wanna make sure that your tomatoes feel firm. And the heirloom tomatoes that we have, the reason you guys don't find heirlooms all year long or very often in your grocery store is they perish really easily and they bruise real easily. So the grocery stores kind of look at them as a liability. So whenever you do see them, it's worth the buy because they're so beautiful. But we're looking for a firm texture and we don't want them to feel wishy-washy. Really important, otherwise it's just not gonna be good eats. It's been off the vine too long and that means that it's had a chance to denature and denaturing is just the natural process. Kind of like a banana, you know, bananas are all, you know, not good for banana bread and you let them sit on the counter and they turn dark, that's denaturing. So firm tomatoes, good, good point, good tip. but I like to start with something like this. So I can pull this out of my freezer or my refrigerator and make whatever sauce I wanna make instead of already having it made for me. So that's the beauty of what we're doing here today is we're making a perfect sauce. So we've got this here. We're gonna start cooking it. I'm gonna go ahead and turn the heat back on. Got my trusty spoon and we're gonna add a good solid pinch of salt. We're not gonna go crazy with it because we don't want to really change the flavor very much. We want nature to do the flavoring for us, which is done. And using a couple of different tomatoes is gonna really be the key. I suggest three tomatoes for this, just so the complexity, the variety, and the unique flavor profile that some of these tomatoes have really come together. It makes your tomato sauce better than your neighbor's tomato sauce. Maybe even your grandma's could happen. Um, so I'm gonna crush these up and let this start cooking down for a little while. The amount of time you cook it, some people like to cook tomato sauces for hours upon hours, which is going to intensify the flavor. It's going to become what you would consider richer, um, more of like that spaghetti sauce, bully bays kind of thing. So right here, just let it cook down for a while and then we're going to puree it. And then you've got a beautiful uh, tomato sauce and we can talk about some interesting recipes. So one of the things I like to do once the tomatoes go in the pot here is to actually crush them myself and let them start cooking this way instead of putting it in the blender first and just eviscerating it. I believe that you develop better flavor here. This is, goes back to the idea of technique. Now you might think it's kind of the same thing, but it's not. The cellular walls inside of the tomatoes are still together and I'm crushing them, releasing some of them. So we're kind of doing like a puree versus letting the tomatoes start cooking down naturally on its own, which is really cool if you think about it, versus just putting it in the blender and then throwing it in the pot. This is the artisan, um, really good culinary technique. And another reason why this tomato sauce is gonna be better than most everyone else's, you know. When you're ready to blend after you've cooked, I cooked mine for about 45 minutes. Be sure to not let it spend too much time in the blender or to lighten the color too much and store it in glass. That's the best, safest way to go. Go ahead and subscribe and hit the bell so you know when we post our next videos. Come join us on social media. We'd love to have you. All of our links will be below. There'll be a, a clickable link below that'll have instructions and some other tips. And you guys have the best. Take care.